In this part two of assignment problem, we will discuss the application of Hungarian method for solving balanced assignment problem for minimization. Let's start by this problem. Determine the optimal assignment for the under mentioned problem by using Hungarian method. Cell values represent the cost in bill of assigning jobs A, B, C, D, and E to operators 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's directly dive into the steps of Hungarian method. Step 1. Row and column reduction, also called matrix reduction. This step by itself has two steps. That's row reduction followed by column reduction. In the steps of row reduction, what we will do is that we will reduce the initial matrix by subtracting the smallest element in each row from every element in that row. So let's start by identifying the minimum value in each row. The minimum value in row 1 is 5. Row 2 minimum is 4. Row 3 minimum is again 4. Row 4 minimum is 7 and row 5 minimum is 5. Let's copy a blank table at this right hand side in order to fill the row reduced entries and continue to carry out row reduction calculation starting from row 1. That's 7 minus 5 is equal to 2. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. 12 minus 5 is equal to 7. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. And 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. In row 2, 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. 13 minus 4 is equal to 9. 11 minus 4 is equal to 7. 11 minus 4 again is equal to 7. 8 minus 4 is equal to 4. When we come to row 3, 10 minus 4 is equal to 6. 11 minus 4 is equal to 7. 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. And again, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. In row 4, 9 minus 7 is equal to 2. 7 minus 7 is equal to 0. 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. 10 minus 7 is equal to 3. And 7 minus 7 is equal to 0. In the ultimate row, 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. 10 minus 5 is equal to 5, 12 minus 5 is equal to 7, 8 minus 5 is equal to 3, and 12 minus 5 is equal to 7. The matrix we determined in this row reduction steps is called row reduced matrix. Then by using this row reduced matrix, subtract the smallest element in each column from every element in that column. The minimum value in column 1, column 2, column 3, and column 5 is 0, and that of column 4 is 2. Again, let's copy a blank table at this right-hand side of the current matrix in order to fill the column reduced entries. Column 1, column 2, column 3, and column 5 values have to be copied as they are because the column minimum of these columns is 0 and he's deducting 0 from every other element gives the element itself. In subtracting column 4 minimum, that is 2, from every other element in that column, we will find 4 minus 2 is equal to 2, 7 minus 2 is equal to 5, 2 minus 2 is equal to 0, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, and again 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. This right hand side matrix is called column and radius matrix, which we will use it in the upcoming steps. Step 2 row scanning and column and scanning. What we will do in this step is that find the minimum number of straight lines that must be drawn through the rows and columns of the current matrix, that is the radius matrix, so that all these rows in the matrix will be covered. Again, in this step, we have some systematic approach to be followed. First, in the reduced matrix, examine the rows successively, and whenever a row with single zero is found, enclose that zero with rectangle and eliminate a column containing that zero by drawing a vertical line through it. Skip the row containing no zero or more than one zero. Row one contains only one zero, that's the zero under column five. So we will enclose this zero in rectangle and we will eliminate column five by drawing a vertical line through it. A row to contain only one zero, that's the zero under column one. Again, we will enclose this zero in rectangle and we will eliminate column one by drawing a vertical line through it. A row three contains two zeros, so we will skip this row. The only undeleted zero of row four is the one under column two, so we will enclose this zero in rectangle and we will delete column two by drawing a vertical line through it. We don't have any unlined zero in row five. So we will skip this row and we will continue to column and scanning. That's following row scanning, examine each unlined column successively. And whenever a column with single zero is found, enclose that zero with a rectangle and eliminate a row containing that zero by drawing a horizontal line through it. Also skip the unlined column containing no zero or more than one zero. We have to skip column one and column two because they are already deleted. Column three contains only one zero, that's the zero in row three. So we will enclose this zero in rectangle and we will delete row three by drawing a horizontal line through it. At this stage, all the zeros in the matrix are covered by straight lines. So let's continue to the other requirements of this step. 
If the minimum number of straight lines is the same as the number of rows or equivalent to the columns, the solution is optimal. This an optimal assignment following the enclosed zero can be made. If the minimum number of straight lines is less than the number of rows, the solution is not optimal and go to step three. The number of lines drawn to cover the zeros is four, but the number of rows is five. Since the number of lines is less than the number of rows, the solution is not optimal and hence optimal assignment can't be made. We have to proceed to step three. That's identify the smallest unlined element, subtract this smallest element from every unlined element and add it to every element at the intersection of two lines. Element covered by a single line will remain the same. The elements in this current matrix can be categorized into three groups. These eight elements are not covered by any horizontal and vertical lines. These 14 elements are covered by a single horizontal or a single vertical line. And these three elements are located at the intersection of two lines. That's at the intersection of horizontal and vertical lines. In this step, what we are going to do is that the 14 elements which are covered by a single line will be copied to the next table as they are. From the eight unlined elements, we will choose the smallest element and we will subtract this smallest element from every unlined element and we will add it to every element at the intersection of two lines. Again, let's copy a blank table at this right-hand side in order to fill the new entries. Then we will copy the 14 elements which do not demand any operation. The smallest unlined element is one. So we have to subtract this smallest unlined element from every unlined element. That's seven minus one is equal to six. Two minus one is equal to one. Seven minus one is equal to six. Five minus one is equal to four. One minus one is equal to zero. One minus one is equal to zero again. Seven minus one is equal to six. And at last one minus one is equal to zero. On the other hand, we have to add this smallest element to every element at the intersection of two lines. That's six plus one is equal to seven. Seven plus one is equal to eight. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Now we have completed all the operations of step 3. Then let's return to step 2. That's the row and column scanning step in order to cover all the zeros by the minimum number of state lines. Row 1 contains only one zero. Since we will enclose this zero in rectangle and delete column 5 by drawing a vertical line through it. The only zero in row 2 is the one under column 1. So we have to enclose this zero with rectangle and delete column 1. Row 3 and row 4 each contains more than one zero, so we will skip them. We can enclose the only undeleted zero of row 5 in rectangle and delete column 4 by drawing a line through it. Following row scanning, we have to examine each unlined column successively, and whenever we find a column with single zero, we will enclose that zero with rectangle and delete a row containing that zero by drawing a horizontal line through it. We will skip column 1 because it's already deleted. The only zero in column two is the one in row four. So we will enclose it in a rectangle and eliminate row four by drawing a horizontal line through it. The only unlined zero in column three is the one in row three. So we will enclose this in a rectangle and delete row three by drawing a horizontal line through it. At this stage, all the zeros in the matrix are covered by straight line. So let's proceed to check whether the number of straight lines drawn is equal to the number of rows or not. Number of rows is equal to five. Number of straight lines is equal to five. That's three vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Since the number of lines drawn is equal to the number of rows, the solution is optimal. Hence the optimal assignment following the zeros inside the rectangle can be made. For such assignment, let's draw a table containing seven rows and three columns. Let's portray operator, job, and cost in the first row of the table. Operator one is assigned to job E and operator one costs five per to complete job E. Operator 2 is assigned to job A. Operator 2 costs 4 bird to complete job A. Operator 3 is assigned to job C. And operator 3 costs 4 bird to complete job C. Operator 4 is assigned to job B. And operator 4 costs 7 bird to complete job B. Operator 5 is assigned to job D. And operator 5 costs 8 bird to complete job D. So the total optimal cost is equal to 5 plus 4 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8, which is equal to 28 bird. At last, let me introduce you one formula that will help you to check the correctness of the optimal total cost we determined. The formula is this. Optimal total cost is equal to the sum of row minimums plus the sum of column minimums plus the smallest element chosen in step three to add or subtract from other elements. The row minimums are five, four, four, seven, and five. So their sum is five plus four plus four plus seven plus five plus column minimums. Except these two, 
all other column and minimums are zero. So we will add only these two. Plus the smallest element chosen is one. The sum of these values is equal to 28. Per. The optimal costs we determined by two different methods are equal. This confirms that the assignment we made is optimal and it's correct. By this, I conclude this part. See you on the next part.